Rushman Gallery opened uh, in the 400 block of Massachusetts Avenue in 1984. Uh, uh, there were just a couple of galleries downtown at the time, and uh, I added my name to the list. Um, it was really kind of the first, uh, the start of the, the art scene uh, in the early 80s uh, that continued along Massachusetts Avenue until the early 90s. And um, we were in that location at 400, in the 400 block of Massachusetts Avenue, specifically 421 and 423. Uh, Massachusetts Avenue on two storefronts there, street level storefronts. We were there for 10 years and then in 1996 uh, we moved to our current location uh, which is 948 North Alabama Street uh, which is just about three or four blocks due north of the old location. As far as my uh, representing artists and my involvement with the artists, um, the gallery has grown over the years to represent uh, about 50 artists. Many of them have uh, ties to uh, Indiana in some form or fashion, or at least ties to the region. I think people will come here when they're looking for quality work by local or regional artists. So uh, while that has been our strength over the years, that's not to say that we don't represent people from outside the area as well. Uh, a lot of the work that I show, a lot of the artists that I represent are uh, through referrals by other artists I represent. The work just has to be of high quality and, uh, and I have to be able to uh, work with you as a professional. What about some of the artists you might have had the longest relationships with? Well, with us preparing to close down the gallery and artists are picking things up, um, that conversation is, is, is uh, front and center. Uh, I had three artists in the other day and it turns out they were all people that I had worked with for over 20 years. Um, uh, for that matter, uh, a good number of the artists I work with uh, you know, fall into that, uh, that category, whether it's 20 years, uh, 15 years, whatever, but for the most part, many of them have been with me for a long time, which makes this process even that much more difficult because it's not only artists that I represent, but, but uh, they've become good friends and, and, and uh, be, I've come to know them quite well over the years. Well, some of the artists, uh, in fact, the ones I just spoke of, people like uh, Tuck Langland out of South Bend, who uh, does uh, beautiful bronze figurative work, um, Michael Helby, who was a fixture in the, the local art scene for many years. Bob Pulley out of Columbus, Indiana, who uh, um, has been with the gallery since almost the very beginning. Then you have people who came along a little bit later on, uh, like Tamar Kander, who lives in southern Indiana, just outside of Nashville, Indiana. Very successful artist, uh, shows all across the country in a number of different galleries. and. Um, and uh, other artists include people like uh, Tom Cassie, uh, Barry Gell, Bob Kingsley, who uh, de uh, teaches at uh, DePaul, um, uh, and, and the list goes on. So there's, uh, at the risk of forgetting somebody, um, I could mention some of the local people here, people like Robert Egerton, Peg Fear, Richard Nicholson, and Mackenzie Nicholson. Um, you know, all kind of affiliated at one time or another with Heron School of Art. Um, and as I, as I think about those things, uh, I've represented uh, uh, fine art professors from a good number of the, uh, the uh, colleges and universities here in the state. So uh, we've been fortunate, uh, very fortunate, with representing some really gifted talent, talented artists, gifted and talented artists, and, and uh, having an opportunity to show their work. Most of the artists that I represent would be considered you know, mid-career or beyond artists. So um, if they're going to be in, it, in this business that long, they're, they, they're probably going to have achieved a certain level of success. And uh, success is measured in you know, many different ways. Uh, not only from the sales that you make, but uh, the company you keep, uh, the uh, opportunities you have to show your work, um, and, 
and I'd like to thank all of the artists I represent have, have brought different strengths to the gallery and uh, certainly uh, provided the, uh, the local art scene with the very best. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a good run and a good relationship. Great. You've always been known in my mind of having a really good uh, uh, reputation for being an arts activist as well. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you've not only been a gallery owner, but you, you've been a representative, you might say, to the public eye in, uh, in visual arts, but kind of that encompasses arts in general in Indianapolis. Uh, did that did that feel like just a natural part of being a gallery owner when you started? Well, I've never really considered myself an arts advocate. I've always uh, looked at it as, as first of all, being a good member of the community, um, and then also it, it always made uh, good business sense to me as well. And I think that if you can uh, join those two things, then everybody's going to benefit from it. The early days along the avenue, um, talking 84, 85, 86, when we had just a few uh, venues, um, uh, was basically, if you didn't do it yourself, it wasn't going to get done. Uh, this is before the Arts Council was engaged with the, with the galleries uh, or with the for-profit world. Uh, there really wasn't a support mechanism in place uh, for, you know, other than what the gallery owners themselves put in place. Uh, the city was aware of what we were doing, but again, there wasn't uh, the infrastructure there to uh, really help us uh, build what we were, what we were trying to uh, uh, accomplish. So it was really out of necessity that you became an advocate or uh, a community um, uh, uh, social networker, as it were, um, to get anything done at all. So if you fast forward 15, 20 years later, all the experiences that have come over those years put you in a position to at least have you know, the historical knowledge of what was done, uh, meet the people that you need to know to get things done and and like everything else learn from your past mistakes and, and, and benefit from the things you've done right. So if you want to talk about organizations like IDATA, uh, which is the Indianapolis Downtown Artists and Dealers Association, a nonprofit membership based organization comprised of artists, dealers, and art related businesses, that's really a culmination of what we were doing on a much smaller scale back in the mid 80s and early 90s. I've always been a firm believer that as the, uh, as the, as the tide rises, all the boats, boats in the harbor rise at the same time. Now the recent downturn in the economy and some of the changes that have taken place uh, um, you know, with uh, budget cuts and things like that have presented uh, real challenges for everybody, not just the arts, but everybody across the board in all types of, of nonprofits and businesses and, and, and free market uh, uh, enterprises and whatnot. So I think the challenge is, is just to step up and figure, figure out a way to get through this difficult time and, and hopefully come out on the other side in, 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 in reasonably good shape. I've never seen one separate from the other. My role as working with uh, an arts advocacy group like IDATA, and then my role as as a gal as a for-profit gallery owner. Uh, I spend a great deal of time, obviously, doing both, and um, and they have seemed to benefit the gallery over the years, and the artists I represent, more importantly. Great.